Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us on our webinar today. This is Hillary Wick speaking. I am the Marketing and Communications Coordinator for America Outdoors, if you haven't met me. And I will be your moderator during this webinar. Uh, please take a moment to locate the chat or question box. Feel free to send a quick message if you want to test it, and I'll reply to let you know that it's working. Uh, just keep in mind, um, please don't send a question or comment to me via email because I won't be checking my email during this webinar. So I will monitor your questions on this platform. I will be the one responding if it's a logistics issue during the webinar. Otherwise, we will be saving our questions um, for Chris until the end of the presentation. Go ahead and write them in whenever you have your question, um, and then I will just save them up and give them to him at the end. A couple of announcements for you. We have two more webinars during this fall series that are coming up. On Wednesday, November 6th, we will have Joel Felcher of TripAdvisor Experiences joining us, and he's going to be giving us tips for online reputation management, plus a discussion specifically on how to improve your listing on TripAdvisor Experiences. Our final webinar of the series will take place Tuesday, November 19th, and Chris Cheswick will join us to educate outfitters um, on the process for landing media. So this webinar will be useful for anyone, really, um, who wants to get coverage for their business, but it is especially important leading up to the AO conference because we will be having eight media representatives there that you will have an opportunity to sit down with and pitch. So this will be really kind of a, a good lead up to that. As a reminder, if you have not done so, it is time to register your team for the America Outdoors Conference in Salt Lake. Uh, that takes place December 9th. And early bird registration ends October 14th. So that's coming up soon. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and take care of it. So now it's time to focus on our webinar for today. I'm really excited to introduce you to Chris Torres, who is joining us all the way from Scotland today. He and I connected because uh, he's recently written a book titled Lookers into Bookers, which focuses on guided experiences and trips. So I thought, you know, that he had some really good insight for outfitters. Today, he will be speaking to us about his best practices for video marketing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Chris, and I will uh, get you some questions at the end. Thank you very much. You're asking me along to provide this webinar. Um, as it was mentioned, uh, I am uh, I am from Scotland, so hopefully you can understand me okay. Uh, so I'll try to speak as clearly as I possibly can. So in uh, this workshop, I'm going to be uh, discussing how video can help boost your brand. Uh, I'll be showing hopefully some live examples as well of the types of videos. Um, hopefully these will stream okay over the internet to you guys uh, fine. Uh, if not, I, I do also provide links to these videos so you can, you can note them down uh, to view after this webinar. Um, and I'm sure this uh, whole presentation will be uploaded for you guys as well. So let's just get stuck right in uh, and get started. So what will you learn in this webinar? Well, you will learn why video is so important. You will learn why uh, or you, how you can produce video uh, on any budget and create different various ideas. I'm going to teach you uh, and show you an easy way to help uh, you generate lots of different types of content ideas by using what's around you. And I'm also then going to show you how you, you can create a content pyramid from one video. Now, what do I mean by a content pyramid? Well, this is a, a way or a method of you recording footage for, uh, say, a two-minute video, and then re-editing that footage to use for over 100 different types of touch points uh, across different platforms uh, across your media. So if you were to post that one a day, you could literally have from one video 90 days worth of content uh, plus. So this is uh, it's just a good way to show you that from having by, by recording the footage and having one video, what you can do with it and the different platforms that you can post this on and the different methods of doing so. So there's quite a, a few things to get through in this webinar. Uh, to give you a brief 
introduction of myself. Um, I've been uh, in sort of brand development and marketing for 26 years or there, thereabouts. Uh, and for the past 12 years, I've been running my own marketing agency uh, called the Tourism Marketing Agency. And we focus on the predominantly the tours and activity sector. And we do help a few accommodation providers and other tourism businesses, but our main uh, focus is the tourism and activity sector. Um, that's through, through our time, uh, we have worked with some of the biggest brands in the world, including Julia Travel uh, and Greyline, who are the oldest and largest sightseeing company in the world, who are actually based in Denver. Um, so this has actually allowed me to gain, uh, and for my team to gain real insights into what makes tourism businesses or destinations successful, uh, and basically know how businesses tick well their startup tour companies all the way through to enterprise level. Uh, and this has also allowed me, as, as it was mentioned, uh, for me to write a book called Lookers into Bookers, which is all about how you can run and promote uh, online your tour business. Uh, and it teaches you everything from branding, from even things like setting up your Google Analytics properly, all the way through to creating strategies and ideas, etc. Um, it's a 400 page book, so it's, uh, it's no easy read but it offers so much advice and also comes with lots of workshops and video guides that you can log in and view as well. So let's just get uh, stuck right into why we're here. So I want to start off with a true story. Um, this is a true story about myself and my wife and one of my best friends. We, we decided we wanted to have one big trip, um, me and my wife, because we were thinking about starting a family. Uh, so this was like uh, the, the last trip before we could do any more of these trips because of babies, etc. So we focused uh, and decided to pick Japan. Uh, I've always had a huge love and respect for Japan um, ever since I was a kid. Um, I always remember being back in primary school when uh, we were given a, a task to talk about a, a piece of history. Uh, and as you can imagine, everyone in the class was uh, doing the usual things and you know, wanted to talk about things like you know, World War One or Two, the Vietnam War, etc., and, and or Bannockburn, the Battle of Bannockburn in Scotland. So I wanted to do something a little bit different and a little bit left ball. Uh, so I, I went home, uh, looked at my dad's books. He was an avid reader uh, of history. Um, he was subscribed to the Reader's Digest. I don't know if you had that in the States, but it was the Reader's Digest and which sent him out books. Uh, and there was one that caught my eye, and it was a book. Uh, I had a, a, it was a, a, an all white cover with a, a, a picture of a samurai warrior on it, and it just caught my gaze and, and, and transfixed me. And that is what basically made me love Japan. I, I read that book cover to cover many times, looking at talking about the history of Japan and everything else. And that's what made me love Japan and made me want to go to Japan. And we had the opportunity to do so, so we did. Um, so to do so, as, as anyone who is a customer of any tour business or any travel business, we had a look online to see what we could do and who could provide that for us. Now, we came across one company um, quite quickly, actually, because we found they had a lot of video content on YouTube. Now, this was around 13, 14 years ago. So this was... This is when YouTube was not really used a lot by businesses the way it is now. Um, so they were really at the forefront of what they were what they were using the platform for. Um, they had a lot of videos by their own tour guides. So their tour guides were providing videos on showing you the different sites, things you could see, hidden gems, etc. Um, but she really showed their passion and why they loved doing what they do. So because of a, a video, one video contained a person called Tyler Palmer. It was one of the tour guides. So after watching that video, called the company, um, and we uh, initially we were going to go for two weeks. Um, so after speaking with the company, they were telling us all the different things we could do. Um, we decided to actually travel around Japan for a month. Um, so me, my wife, and one of my best friends booked in for a month, and we did two weeks with with them as a, a guided tour around various parts of Japan. Um, and in the last two weeks, we travelled ourselves, but they organised all the hotels, etc., for us. Um, so it was very, very good in that sort of sense. But the reason why we decided to stay on for an extra two weeks was because of the video content that they had, and because of the guides showing their passion uh, and their staff sort of selling the dream, as it were, I suppose you could say. Now, because of that, uh, no, we, we saw things that we never thought possible in Japan. 
But one of the things that they wanted, uh, they said that we could do was climb to the top of Mount Fuji to see the sunrise. Um, and we were thinking, but we're not the fittest people in the world. We're not, we're not, uh, no, we're fit, but we're not that fit. Um, but they made it happen and we did it. And that was one of the best experiences I have ever had in my life, um, was getting to the top of Mount Fuji to see the sunrise and the sights were quite spectacular um, being high above there. But we managed to do it and all that was driven from watching one piece of video content so that one piece of video content, if you think about what it did, it really drew us in. It allowed us to contact that company. It then allowed us to, you know, we basically spent more money because we stayed longer. We, we spent more time in Japan. We experienced more. And even now and today, we still talk about it like, like I am doing now. Uh, we still talk about it anytime we hear of anyone wanting to go to Japan. We tell them about this company, how highly rated they are, how we, we love them. And the amount of business that we have passed on to this other company in terms of referrals has been quite a lot. Um, so that was all driven, as I say, from one piece of video content. So that's how powerful video can be. And that's why I always say to tour businesses or any travel businesses that video should be one of the first, uh, one, of the, one of the main tools that you use. It's such a powerful tool. And throughout this presentation, I'll explain why. So why is video important? Well, I'm going to throw a, a couple of stats at you as well for this, so I apologize. But, um, but why video is important? Well, it builds brand reputation. Well, brand reputation uh, allows you to then really sell the dream to people. It really helps sell your business uh, in the best possible light. No, you don't need to you know, go out and expend expense, you know, record video in really expensive terms. You can do it on a modest budget. Uh, again, I'll show various examples throughout this presentation. Um, but you can, you can do it on your mobile phone, you can do it on GoPros, you can, you can go to an expert if you wish, but you don't need to uh, spend lots of money producing really high quality video. And it can do so many things for your, video, for your business in terms of building up that brand reputation. Building up your trust uh, it can really do wonders for you. But more so than that, it helps build lasting relationships. So we've had a relationship with that company for over 13 years since we went to Japan. We still pass over our business to them for, for our family and friends or people we speak to um, or anyone who is having a thought about going to Japan. But not only that, when I mentioned the tour guide who was on that video, Tyler Palmer, he happened to be the tour guide who met us at the airport and happened to be our tour guide for the first two weeks of our journey. Um, so we are actually friends with him today on Facebook and we still talk to him on Facebook. Um, he's even started his own family. He's grown within that business. He's still in that business. And uh, we do plan once our own kids are a little bit older to go back and we want him to be our tour guide. Again, all that was driven from one video. It is quite incredible. But again, I don't like throwing many stats at people, so I'm going to keep this brief. But when it comes to video uh, online, the average user watches 32 videos per month online. That would be on YouTube, Facebook, for example. And actually, since uh, I think it probably has gone up a lot in the last six months or so because video has just exploded. But when it comes to video, which is uh, this is these two stats are really, really important. 79% of travellers will search YouTube for ideas. So someone who's looking to go to a destination or go on holiday uh, will go to YouTube and search for inspiration. But more importantly, 67% of those travellers have yet to select a destination. So this is one of the reasons why when we speak to our own customers, we say, no, yes, have videos about your own experiences, about your own products, etc. But you also have to have video on there to help sell your destination. So just have it focused on your destination, why your destination is one of the best to go to. You know, sell it as much as possible and have a video on that. Because as I say, 67% of travellers have yet to select that destination. So if they might come across your video um, and that might spur them on to say, that's where I want to go and this is where I want to be. And then eventually they may also take out one of your products. So this is why I say, do a video about your destination as well. Don't just do it around your own products and your own experiences. But this next stat is the stat that really blows me away. 
consumers, your customers will process information with video 60,000 times faster than written form. So what this means is someone landing on a product page or on your website or on social, if they view a video rather than reading, uh, reading paragraphs of text, they will process the information 60,000 times faster, meaning that someone will click your book button or inquiry button 60,000 times faster. To me, that is a start. It's, it's a no-brainer why you should not you should be using video. It's it's quite an incredible start. But if you think about it, it as humans, we, we all do we all do process information a lot quicker if we actually watch it rather than read it. So, but I, that's not to say you should have written content on the page as well. You should cater for both, as also for SEO purposes. But yes, using video allows people to process information sixty thousand times faster. So I'm now going to explain how you can film on any budget. So the first one is the obvious one, is to film on your smartphone. Now, most smartphones, in fact, pretty much more these days, will record in 4K video. Um, actually, on our website, we've got a guide about recording, uh, sort of top 10 tips for recording videos, um, which you can look at later on. And it talks about always recording in 4K video for various reasons. But yeah, it allows you to record really high quality video on your mobile phone. So it's, again, there is no excuse not to do video. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see this video alright, or, or be able to uh, hear it. But this is a video from Grey Lane, Iceland. Um, now this video is from a, a girl called Didi, um, who again, and this is a, another prime example, um, when I went to Iceland, um, I did a tour around there, I was also there for a conference, but we went for a tour and Didi happened to be our tour guide. Uh, and I first saw her in one of the videos for Grey Line Iceland. So again, this is a thing where about building relationships and it helps break down the barriers because it's like meeting an old friend uh, when you go to them and you see that that's the one you met in that video. So it just already sparks up conversation as well. So it helps just to break down those barriers, as I say. So if this video doesn't play well for you, and uh, you can see the link there, take a note of that, that you'll be able to watch that video um, separately uh, after this, after this uh, workshop. Uh, but uh, again, I'll, be supplying all this information to you guys uh, later as well. So hopefully this video plays okay. But this is a video um, about uh, Iceland. It's a, a 60 second video. And Didi is talking about uh, an aspect of our culture that a lot of people don't understand uh, or may not realise. But it's, it adds a bit of fun to it as well. It's quite a funny video as well. So uh, I'll, I'll play it just now and hopefully you can hear and watch it okay. hear that okay uh, or watch it okay so basically <laughs> the, the, the Vikings um, and they do not have a word for please uh, so they're making a bit of fun about that and uh, their word is literally do it um, but again it's just to sort of show you a bit of fun a bit of humor uh, it's from one of the tour guides and it just gets across a little bit about Icelandic culture uh, a very very simple video but one that has been watched many, many times uh, and has actually generated uh, a lot of revenue from people clicking through and off to a product. Um, but something like that, which again was just filmed on a smartphone, can work very, very well. Another small budget option is to, of course, use videos from your customers. Um, so how can you acquire a video from your customers? Well, one thing you can do is to run competitions. Uh, people, your, your customers can submit a video uh, to win a prize, uh, but you have it in the terms and conditions that you are able to use uh, any video submitted for your own marketing purposes. So that's a, a great way of building up a library of videos. And the good thing about using customer videos is your potential customers, uh, when they watch that, they see it as being more genuine uh, and more real, which in turn makes it more trustworthy. So if you can use uh, videos from your customers, I urge you to do so. Now, an example of this I'm going to show you, and don't worry, I'm not going to bore you with the full thing, 
It was actually a home video from myself and my family um, when my daughter was uh, a baby. Um, we went to Barcelona for a weekend. Uh, and this video I was using, uh, I filmed on a GoPro. Uh, so a very inexpensive piece of equipment. And uh, I used the GoPro, I have a product called the Karma Grip. So what this does is it attaches to the GoPro. So if you're running or walking uh, or whatever, it doesn't jump up and down. It sort of acts as a gimbal to make it uh, glide or seem, sort of seem like gliding along thin air. Um, it gives it a bit more cinematic feel. Again, the quality is great. Um, I, I, and I'm not uh, a videographer by any stretch of the imagination. I know how to use video, I edit video, etc. But I am not a videographer by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so this is just me out on a holiday with my family. Uh, recording and this is the type of quality of video that your customers could be producing now that you could use in your marketing. Now with this video I added uh, some titles, uh, I downloaded some stock uh, uh, audio tracks uh, and added that to it as well. Uh, I'll come on to a bit more of that in a second. Um, but again if you can't see this video use that link there to uh, take a note of it and you can watch that video uh, at a later date. Uh, but hopefully you can see and hear this now. So I'll just play this just now. Stay there. That was my son, not my daughter. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you get uh, the idea. Um, again, it just keeps it steady. It makes it glide, and it just gives a real quality, professional feel to it. And you can get that equipment for sort of uh, the GoPro itself, about four hundred dollars, and it's probably about the same for the camera grip. So if you were out on tour and you're doing, so, you could record some video while you're doing so, um, and create some really good high quality video yourselves, or indeed the customers could be carrying this equipment and doing it for you and utilising that, that footage would work wonders for your marketing. And again, give it a more genuine, truer uh, experience and feel. So it allows your customers or potential customers to picture themselves in that customer's shoes. And that's why it's so important to use customer video as well. Again, hopefully you were able to see that okay. Another option, uh, quite controversially, is using stock footage. Now, you may think this is a funny one, but uh, there's some really, really good stock footage out there that you can use. Um, I wouldn't say you would use it all the time. Uh, I would use it in certain circumstances. But you can use stock footage for things like uh, background uh, videos on a website. So this was a, a video we created uh, for an Italian company. Um, and every single piece of this footage was from stock. Uh, but this just sat at the back of their website. Uh, as people were navigating on the homepage. Um, again, I really am a big fan of background videos on websites because it helps draw people in and captures their imagination, holds them there a little bit longer. Um, and you tend to find that they then scroll to find more information because the video has captured them that little bit longer on the page. So, background videos, again, if you can't take your own footage, you no know, use stock footage is a great way of, of producing that. Um, I'll tell you some of the stock footage uh, places you can buy sort of this type of stuff in a minute. Um, another thing you can use is to create ads as well. Um, now this was uh, again, this is a very very uh, what I'm going to show you here is a very very rough ad, um, and this ad is all about uh, the Amalfi Coast and to help advertise that. And I was actually a challenge I was given by a client at the time saying you can't use stock images uh, or stock footage. So I set about saying, well, I'm going to prove you wrong. 
So here uh, is a video showing some stock uh, footage, again, it's very, very rough, with some uh, stock audio track over the top. And I was lucky enough to find footage of the Malfi Coast um, showing the same two girls uh, as if they were travelling around. So that allowed me to then create a more cohesive video um, using stock. Again, you can watch it at that link if this doesn't play well for you. So I'll just play this just now. So again, that was all using stock footage uh, and stock audio. Um, no, the video um, was more geared towards you know, the Amalfi Coast. It's a beautiful place. It was two young girls who obviously love being on Instagram and uh, taking lots of photographs of their time. So it was, it was more aimed towards that market. Um, but again, using stock footage. Now, there's a couple of places where you can purchase stock footage. Um, one place is uh, Big Stock Photo. Now, Big Stock Photo do photographs as well as video. Um, and they do monthly subscriptions for $60 for both um, video and photogra photographs separately. But it allows you to download up to 10 images or 10 videos per day. Um, so you can find really good footage on there that you can download and then edit to use within your own you know, website background, etc. If you're not familiar with it or you don't see yourself taking video yourself. Um, another place is Pond5. Now there they are some, like, more expensive. They are roughly sort of $50 to $100 plus per uh, footage. But sometimes if you just want something that's a little bit more high quality, you can find things there as well. But again, it doesn't need to break the bank when you're creating footage uh, using stock and use. And so medium to large budget options is obviously hire an expert. Now you can hire an expert to create footage for you. But again, this does not need to be expensive. You know, there's some experts out there who will charge you a few hundred dollars and there'll be experts out there who will charge you a few thousand dollars. No, just have a look at the portfolio, look at sort of see what they can offer you, and just go with your with your feeling of what uh, how they how they look and feel in their videos. Um, so what I'm going to show you is a couple of examples of uh, a quality video done by an expert on what this can do. Now the, the video I'm going to show you is actually using it in one of my favourites is an itinerary video. Now an itinerary video is a, a, a video that's actually on a product page which is going to show the experience, the highlights of that tour. And I'll come on to a little bit more about this in a second. Welcome to the Golden Circle Tour. Southern Iceland's most popular tourist route and a chance to visit some of Iceland's most historical attractions. The Vetlir National Park, founded in 1930, holds historical, cultural, and geological importance. Lying in the Rift Valley, it marks the crest of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and often so with that, um, it's obviously sort of going through the highlights of what you experience and what you will see in that part of Iceland. Um, again, having a video like this, whether it's a professional one or whether it's one you shoot yourself or using customer video, having a video on your product page can help sell you more product, help sell you more tools and activities. Um, but we did a test with that one, um, with a product with just an image and then a product with the video. And they, uh, their bookings went up by around 80% almost immediately um, just by having a video like that on the actual selling page, on the product page. So again, if you can, have video in all your products uh, across, your, across your product range. Uh, it can really help sell your products a lot quicker. And remember, it can also help sell your products 60,000 times quicker because they process that information a lot quicker. Now, the next video uh, by a professional, um, again, I won't show you the full thing, uh, is for an adventure company if you're based in Scotland. Uh, again, you can go to that link to view it later if, it's, if the videos are not playing for you properly. Um, and this is just to, again, just to show you, give you a general feel and a general highlights of what this company does. They offer many things. Uh, they offer camping, they offer whitewater rafting, 
uh, and various other uh, abilities, no paintballing as well, etc. So this video was just a little uh, overview video of what they offered uh, their customers. So let me just uh, quickly play this for you. <laughs> Now, the reason why I wanted to show you that was when I thought the other examples that I've shown, you know, the home video, the video on the smartphone and all that, you can obviously see the quality gets better and better as you go through each video. But that's not to say that any of these methods are wrong. No, I, would, I wouldn't say stick to one. I would say there's a mixture of all these methods. There is no right and wrong. No, sometimes using video that has just been filmed on a smartphone comes across as more genuine, etc. like I say, especially customer videos. And other times you do want to be a bit more uh, become a bit more uh, extravagant and use more, uh, more an expert video as well uh, and highlight that as well. So sometimes th there is no right and wrong, as I say. Uh, a mixture of all these methods is great for the wonders of the business. So now I'm going to uh, just quickly go through how you can generate content ideas because some people might think, okay, it's great uh, to do this video, but how can I do this video? And what ideas can I have? And the ideas I'm going to say here, it doesn't need to just be for video, it could be for written content, it could be for blogs, it could be for other things as well. And one of the things I always say is, you know, look close to home. You know, when it comes to marketing, people are always looking for that new idea, that what's round about them, you know, which, uh, what can you do to stand out. And the thing I always say is be yourself. You know, nothing comes across as more genuine, as more heartfelt, or uh, as more trustworthy than being yourself. Um, if you try to be something else, it will always fail. So be yourself. So this is what the, these content ideas and this little strategy is all about. So who is in your team? Now look at the, 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 the members of your team, everything from the owners to the tour guides to everything, the cleaner, whatever. Um, look at everyone in your team. Now this example, uh, the examples I'm going to show you here are from a, a fictional food, food and tour company. So they have two owners and they have four tour guides. Um, and, uh, so you list, what you would do is you would list all your, your staff and some basic skills of what they have in their business. Then you go into a little bit more depth into their skills. So um, the owner, uh, the owners happen to be former chefs. Um, so they also do some of the cooking classes uh, and managing external cooking classes. Um, one of the tour guides um, uh, is a qualified sommelier. Uh, and one of them actually speaks French. Uh, and the other is a whiskey tasting expert. So you know, just look about what's around you in terms of your own staff, your own uh, and see what skills that you have and use that to your best abilities for creating content. Things like, uh, no, no for, for, for creating topics around content. I'll come on to that a little bit in a second. Then look about what's in, in your destination. What are the great sites? What are little hidden gems that no one knows about? So then make a list of this as well. And uh, this, uh, this is a food drink tour company in my hometown of Glasgow here in Scotland. So uh, you know, we selected some of the things that are around Glasgow city centre as well as our, our West End. Um, which has, which is a sort of a trendy sort of place that people go to for food and drink, etc. So make a list of all the different things that people may love and your, your customers may love, that, and things that are maybe on your tours. Then look at any partners you have. Now, do you have any partners that help you with your tours, your products, etc. While you're while you're taking your customers out on tour? Look at them as well. Now, again, this is a food drink tour company. Um, we've we've met, we listed some of the restaurants that they take some of their customers to. Uh, and what do they offer in terms of their own experience and services? So, um, 
got the, the one you know, for example, the first one there has the largest whiskey bar, um, one that has a gin bar, one is amazing at flaring, which, which no one knows what flaring is, that's the juggling of the, the bottles and the, uh, the glasses when you're, when you're, uh, from the fans people behind the bar. Um, so list the experiences and uh, skills that they have as well. And then from that, create ideas. Now you can upload some of this information into Google, uh, that's for another workshop, but, um, to find topics and, uh, and titles of things that you can use. But for example, um, using the information that we just found for that company, uh, we can create videos of an expert series which can have cooking classes. Uh, so you, you create a video once per month, you know, cooking a recipe that, or one of the recipes of taking someone out on tour. Um, one could be a whiskey tasting uh, video, a gin tasting video, one of the people were, were vegan, so yeah, veganism is, is such a huge movement at the moment. Um, and it's, actually a, it's actually a big movement here in Glasgow. Um, so vegan tours are becoming more and more popular. So you could have a video about vegan and vegan food uh, and vegan in Glasgow. Um, so you could create lots and lots of different topics for written blogs, but also for video topics that you can post up a video once per month. And why would you do things like expert series, etc.? Well, this helps show your expertise within the industry. It helps build up trust within your, your customers because they can see that you are the authority within your industry because it builds up that trust, it builds up your brand reputation uh, by creating videos around what's around you, about the skills that you have within your teams and uh, it comes across as more genuine just by being yourself. Now, with all that video and all that content that you can create, um, yes, what do you do with it then after that? Well, and even if you only record one, say you record uh, that Ace Adventures video that I showed. Um, that was a two minute long video, which was a general overview video um, about what they did. But then that was broken down into lots and lots of other videos to be posted across different types of social media. So I'm going to now explain how you can create a content empowerment and creating over 100 pieces of content from one video. So you would first have your two to three minute video. So Ace Adventures had a, a two minute video. It showed kayaking, um, base jumping, paintballing, uh, and various other things as well, tubing, etc. etc. So that video was two minutes long and contained, say, five or six different activities. So what you would do is you would then break that down into maybe two one minute videos, four 30 second videos, and six 15 second videos. So various platforms all allow you to have one minute videos or 60 second videos, sorry, uh, 30 second videos or 15 second videos. So you can then re-edit video from that one, or re-edit footage from that one video and then edit that down into all the other different platforms. So by doing so, you then create lots and lots of different content going across multiple different channels and different platforms. So by now, you're probably already created around 50 or 60 70, 80 pieces of content that or which can then go across all those different platforms. As you get six 15 second videos, four 30 second videos, two one minute videos, and then your two minute video. And if you include all the different platforms that, that could go across, that's you creating a multitude of, of, of content that you can then post out. But because it doesn't need to stop there. You can then create five stills from that video or taking nice shots from the video putting quotes over the top of them and then posting that across your social media platforms as well. You can even use bits of software that you can upload small clips of your 50 second videos to, uh, to certain various services and then create little animated GIFs to then have them post across your different social media platforms, creating even more content. Again, all produced from one initial video. And again, it does not stop there. If you're doing an expert series, uh, like I do with my, uh, I produce my own video series called the Digital Tourism Show, uh, I have posted over 200 videos of tourism marketing advice, where I offer marketing advice for free, I also speak to industry experts, etc. Uh, and what I do with that, it's a video podcast, and what I do with that is I also post it up as an audio podcast. So you could basically take the audio from uh, some of the videos that you produced and create audio podcasts. And that can go across things like iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, uh, Stitcher, et cetera, et cetera, um, Google Podcasts as well. Uh, and it's amazing, I did this more as a test for myself, but it's amazing how many people listen to podcasts. Podcasts are huge. Um, so if you are doing an expert series on whiskey tasting, and it's something that can be listened to and you don't need to watch it as well, upload that onto these different platforms. 
Um, there's a tool called Audio Boom, uh, which allows you to upload your audio uh, to that service, and then that service can then distribute that audio across the multitude of different podcast platforms. So you could be across many, many platforms. You know, since I uploaded my own audio to it, I have had over, which wasn't that long ago, I had over 10, I've now had over 10,000 listens across uh, the podcast channels. And that's content. That's, you've already created that content. You've already recorded that content in your videos. So just extract the audio, upload it to that platform, and you could reach another audience. It's so simple to do. Uh, but just with all those different platforms, with all the different edits of the videos and the audio, you can create over a hundred different touch points across the different social media platforms. And if you were to do one of those touch points per day, that's over three months worth of content from one video. Do, do lots and lots of videos, you'll have lots and lots of content across multiple different platforms. So you don't need to post everything up on the same day. You can post one video up on Facebook one day, Twitter the next, and style it out like that. So that's how you can create content. That's how you can record video on any budget, and that's how you can create lots and lots of content from just by producing one video. But to be honest, none of that means nothing unless you don't have a story. It all comes down to story. Be genuine, genuine, be yourself, tell your stories, show your experiences, and just be true to yourself. Don't try to be anyone else. And don't be scared that if you think no one will listen or no one will pay attention. Now, when it comes to podcasting or videos, when I did my digital tourism show, um, I'm now on video 220. Um, it took about 100 videos before it really took hold. So don't give up after three or four videos. So keep at it, persevere. It will work for you. You just need to be patient. Sometimes you can hit the ground running and it can take off straight away. But if it doesn't, don't be disheartened. Keep at it, be true to yourself, and it will eventually pay off. Because at the end of the day, most of your competitors probably won't be doing this. And if you are, you're doing one thing better than them, and you've got another opportunity to be in front of a potential customer. So you can find uh, more information on this, as well as lots and lots of other information, like Facebook advertising, etc., with my book, Lookers and Tubukers, and you can find more about that at tourismmarketing.agency. But uh, that is me. I think I have spoken enough. Uh, hopefully all that's worked okay for you guys in terms of uh, viewing the videos, etc. Uh, if not, you will find a way to get that to you. But I'm now ready for any questions, if there was any questions ready for me. Great, Chris. Uh, we, we have had some questions coming in, so let's just launch into that. Um, you mentioned a couple of places where you can get um, stock video for an affordable rate. What should people That's do good. when they're looking for the music for the background of their video, taking into account legality and permission concerns? No, that's very good. Yes, uh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't obviously use any um, popular music out there, <laughs> uh, well, you will be soon. Um, there's a great um, uh, library, very much like the, the stock footage libraries, but there's a, a, a website called Audio Jungle, um, which has thousands upon thousands upon thousands of audio tracks that you can purchase from as little as five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, and no more than that. And that will allow you to uh, basically um, purchase a, a, a royalty free audio track that you can then use within your own videos or any other form of marketing you want to do online, you'd be able to purchase music now. Great, thank you. Um, no let's see. Peter here had a question about the length of the video, and your pyramid gave a little bit of insight into that, but I wonder if you could um, give any more as to how long someone should make a video. He mentioned that he's heard that one minute is a good best practice for people keeping people's interest. Yeah, I, I hear this a lot, and in a way, yes, you are correct, no. So, but it's more so because some platforms like Instagram or Twitter or whatever, they only allow 60 second videos. Um, so that's one of the reasons why for that. But I am a big believer. Um, 
things that are on Facebook, for example, or on YouTube, you know, videos that are two to three minutes long can work very well. Um, it's just about playing about with what you have, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work for your audience. But at the end of the day, if you think about it in terms of a, a movie that you go to the cinema to see, um, do you walk out five minutes in or two minutes in, or do you stay there till the end? Uh, most people, if the film is good, stay there till the end. And the reason they do that is because um, the story was so good they were gripped. They, uh, that is what it, that's one of the reasons why people say stick to a 60 second video. It's because they're scared that they won't engage their audience. As long as your video is engaging, as long as it's, uh, it tells a story uh, and your customers are drawn in, you could have a five minute video and they could still be watching to the end, but you have to tell a good story. But yes, I would say for, for, for best practice, your main video that you can use on things like Facebook, for example, or your longer video, maybe no more than two minutes, all your other videos can be then cut down to a minute long, 30 seconds long, etc. Great, thank you. Um, now, can customer reviews or, or yeah. customer videos, excuse me, when um, a customer puts up a video and say they tag you in it or they, they add it to their review on a review site, do you need to have written consent to use that in your marketing efforts? Yes, you would, unless you unless you have something um, in the T's and C's. It depends if it's your platform or not. If it's been put up in a review platform, then I think, if I remember rightly, um, I actually need to look into this, but I believe they've given that platform the permission to use it on their platform, but it means you cannot use that to then use it in your own marketing purposes. You would need to contact that customer asking for, uh, for permission before you do so um, to make sure that they're happy with it. Um, to be honest, most people and most customers that I we have done this for um, are more than happy for the video to be on it because they go, oh, my, they feel a little bit of pride uh, in terms of my videos being used for, for something. Um, so you probably find that most people are, are happy for you to do so. But yes, you do need to ask permission. The only other way, as I mentioned in the, the workshop, was to run your own competition where people can upload video to um, Facebook or whatever um, or some other channel. And then... You just have it that in the T's and C's of that competition that if they do so, you can then use that footage in your own marketing. And so that's that's how got one way to get around it. Um, is to run a competition and someone wins a prize for the best video submitted or something like that. So yeah. Great, thanks. Um, another question is um, choosing the title for your video. Uh, Sarah has heard that um, it can be a smart move to title your video with the question that someone might be asking when they go looking for your video. Um, but what are your best practices and tips for choosing the title? No, that's uh, great. Sarah's, Sarah's spot on. Um, if, you can, if you can create a, a video and title it with a question or something that's searched a lot using a, a popular keyword, definitely do so. No, there's a, a great website uh, called, I think it's called Answer the Public. Um, which allows you to put in search terms um, and uh, this will give you a list of possible uh, search terms that you can then use as well as well as possible questions that people are asking so if you if you're doing uh, um, something say, say someone was searching for uh, something around the Vatican or how do I get to the Vatican for, for, for talking sake um, that could be the title of your video, um, if that's something that's been searched a lot. So yes, definitely, if you can, and it's a popular term that's being used, use that in the title of your video for sure. Great. Um, so a lot of the videos that you posted today um, were just a background music and um, maybe some words on the screen as opposed to a narrator. I wonder what your tips are for when you choose to have someone speaking or interview style and, and when you do just the music with the, the imagery? Yeah, again, good question. It's, there is no right and wrong. Um, you know, having video of you talking to camera, if it's like an advice video, yeah, it's, it's perfect. Um, but also having video of, I think it was a Grey Line Iceland one, with, which was the itinerary video, that had uh, uh, someone talking over the footage as well. So if you just want it to be something to entice someone in and maybe have some text on the video without any words, um, you can do so. Um, the good thing about having um, not having sp uh, spoken words 
all the time on your video is it allows, and this might not happen for everyone, of, everyone who's listening here, but if you have customers from different countries who are maybe not great at speaking English, it's good for that as well. Um, but if you are targeting there is no right and wrong, or have video with people talking over it, some without, try a mix. Um, put subtitles on it as well if you can, um, because that's, because uh, as you, as probably most of you realise, if you're on Facebook and you scroll uh, on your phone, videos automatically play without audio, so having uh, subtitles there so people can read because um, that happens more often than you think people will actually watch a video without the audio they read the subtitles uh, on a mobile phone so if you can and it's a short video have your subtitles on there as well but there's no right and wrong uh, as I say you know, just play about with the different methods see which we'll do a bit of uh, as we call A-B testing do a video with a narrative and one without and see which one performs better uh, and go and keep doing whatever one performs best Great, thanks. Um, also, I just had this question because I missed it. What was the device that you mentioned um, that you use with the GoPro? Oh yes, it's called the Karma Grip. So this just attaches to the GoPro uh, and, and acts like a gimbal. So it allows you to, uh, my, you can basically run with it um, or put it onto a mountain bike, for example. Um, if you put a GoPro on a mountain bike, on a helmet or a mountain bike, you do get a lot of jumping up and down, as you can imagine, uh, especially if you're going over rough terrain. Um, the, the camera grip allows you to, it basically smooths out that whole footage uh, as much as possible and it gives you a really, uh, it basically it looks as if it's flying rather than jumping up and down. It makes it a lot more watchable, so it's, it's a great piece of equipment if you're using a GoPro. You can actually get um, not the not the camera grip, but there are other versions similar to the camera grip which you can get for things like the iPhone and other smartphones. So uh, there are other options out there as well now. Great. Well, I believe that's all the questions we have for now. So thank you so much, Chris, and thank you everybody out there for your time today. I hope you learned a lot, and we look forward to seeing you in the future. No, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for allowing me to do this, and hopefully everyone found that useful. Thanks all.